Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hello everyone, I'm Nick Claridge and welcome to another edition of Emergency Medicine Cases Rapid Review. Today we're going to cover part two of neonatal resuscitation. Continuing on from part one, we're going to review when to initiate chest compressions, the proper technique, how to get vascular access, and the use of epinephrine. Let's review from episode one. We looked at the overall picture from the 2015 NRP algorithm. It follows the ABC approach, with a focus on ventilation and oxygenation, then moving to circulation. We go from minimally invasive interventions to more invasive interventions. Today, we're going to focus on circulation. We've again broken it down into boxes that represent decision points, and we'll discuss each individually. Let's get up to speed. It all starts with prep. Get your equipment, prepare yourself, and assemble your team. Then, out comes the baby. Ask yourself three questions. Are they term? Do they have tone? And are they breathing or crying? If the answer is no to any of these questions, move to warming, positioning the airway, stimulating and suctioning if needed. Next, check the heart rate. If it's less than 100, you need to move to positive pressure ventilation. If that's not getting adequate chest rise, then use the Mr. Sopa mnemonic for ventilation corrective maneuvers. If the heart rate is still less than 100 and you don't have chest rise, move to the placement of a supraglottic airway or proceed to intubation and attempt ventilation again. Now, what happens next? This brings us to box five. So you've intubated, attempted ventilation for 30 seconds. The next step, as before, is to check the heart rate. If the heart rate is less than 60, then you want to intubate if you haven't already. And then you want to start chest compressions. The key concept here is that you want to establish adequate ventilation first prior to starting chest compressions. And if you're doing chest compressions, dial up the FiO2 to 100%. Next, you want to consider getting IV access. Let's review chest compressions, because it's a little bit different than adults and children. Administer compressions from the head of the bed. That way you're out of the way. The preferred technique is the two-thumb technique on the lower one-third of the sternum to a depth of about one-third of the chest diameter. The ratio is three to one, coordinated with positive pressure ventilation. So that's one and two and three and breathe, one and two and three and breathe. This will get you 120 events per minute. Now you've got to do 60 seconds of this until the next heart rate check. What is the preferred vascular access? Umbilical vein catheter is the preferred route. There are lots of great videos out there showing the proper technique. Intraosseous access is only suitable for infants greater than three kilograms. So now you've started the compressions, you've dialed up the FiO2 and you've inserted the UVC. You want to continue the compressions for 60 seconds and reassess the heart rate. Again, if the heart rate is less than 60, despite our interventions, we want to start epinephrine. How do we do this? Epinephrine can be delivered via two routes, down the endotracheal tube or through the UVC, an IV or IO. For the ET tube epi, you want to fill a 3 mL syringe with 0.1 mg per mL of cardiac epi and deliver 1 mL per kilogram. Make sure you clearly label this syringe, and this is given rapidly without a flush. And it's okay to give your first dose via the ET tube while you're waiting a line. Once you've established access, drop epi in a 1 mL syringe and note the difference between the ET tube epi and give 0.1 mL per kilo with a 0.5 to 1 mL normal saline flush. What about giving fluid and sugar? Unlike older children and adults, neonatal arrest is rarely due to hypovolemia. So fluid resuscitation is rarely a priority in this age group. It is recommended that after 120 seconds of effective positive pressure ventilation and 90 seconds of chest compressions, which is basically after you've given your epinephrine, you want to start to give normal saline 10 mL per kilo over 20 minutes. Don't forget to check a glucose as well and provide D10W 2 mL per kilo bolus within 30 minutes of life to avoid hypoglycemia. If you're still having difficulty ventilating and oxygenating, consider the DOPE mnemonic. D is for the displacement of the ET tube, O is for obstruction with mech or blood, P is for pneumothorax, and E is for equipment failure. The goals of resuscitation is to have this kid stable, and yes, this is another mnemonic. S is for sugar between 4 to 6, T is for temperature between 36.5 and 37.5, A is for a patent airway, B is for oxygen sat of 90 to 95 at 10 minutes, 
L is for labs with a target CO2 of 45 to 55, and E is for emotional support for the family. Well, that's everything for the entire algorithm. Again, the majority of the bursts will not progress this far down, but it's good to know what to do. After you establish an airway, recheck the heart rate. If it's less than 60, 60 initiate compressions and dial up the FiO2 to 100 and get IV access. If after 60 seconds of compressions, the heart rate is still less than 60, it's time to start epi. This can be given by the ET tube if no IV access. And consider IV fluids, but really this is last resort. Remember the dope mnemonic if you're having trouble oxygenating and ventilating and the stable mnemonic for goals of resuscitation. Thank you again for listening and hopefully we've made this algorithm a little bit easier to remember. See you again next time.